Let us welcome the prophet Moses Anderson. God is good. Thank you. I appreciate that. God is good. Praise the Lord. Thank you, everybody. You may be seated. God is good. You may be seated also. Hallelujah. And so, um, wow, what a wonderful time of, um, of celebrations in God's presence. And I like very greatly that perspective that my wife shared about the bread that got multiplied when it was shared. And I'm telling you, I don't even think I've heard anyone say it quite like that when it comes to testimonies. When we share it, it multiplies. And I know that that multiplication, thank you, I appreciate that, Charles. What that multiplication is does not simply mean more in the lives of the ones who have testified, but it means also more in the community that receives those testimonies. And so if there's anything that you are waiting on, look at what Tia said. She said the calls kept coming back to back to back to back because our blessings are meant to be like chains that are connected. You know, when you have chains, you connect one ring to another and one loop to another, and then it becomes something of beauty. And that is exactly what I believe we all are positioned to tap into today if we will. And when I say, if we will, the Lord wills. You understand what I mean? You know, because you know people who went to Jesus in the Bible and said to him, oh, if you will. And the Bible says, Jesus said, I am willing. And so God is willing to do it. We just need to be willing to believe, to press in and to receive. I said to John just now that it is harvest season and I'm not just saying that because it sounds good but I say that because I know that it is harvest season praise the Lord because the Bible says that seed time and harvest shall not cease and we have sown and it's time for us to reap and this is going to happen in multiple ways in multiple 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 ways turn in your Bibles with me very quickly to the book of Micah chapter 1 verse 7 the book of Micah chapter 1 verse 7 and we will do a reading or two. We might even, well, let's, let's just start from there. But before, okay, let me show you this in Solomon chapter three, verse four. Songs of Solomon chapter three, verse four. And then we're gonna go back to this Micah because I want us to read that Micah with such an abundance of light. We need to receive that revelation very clearly. It has to be well illuminated to us. So come with me uh, in order for us to do that right, in order to achieve that as described, come with me to uh, Songs of Solomon chapter 3 verse 4. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All righty. So Cedric, once you have a little break, if you don't mind continuing just for a moment, that'll be awesome. Oh yeah, thank you. And then um, whoever is moderating the audio or the volume can turn it down a little just so it's enough. Just enough. Alrighty, Songs of Solomon chapter 3. And um, I'm just uh, making sure here that we have... Everything well situated before I continue. Alrighty, are we good to go? Praise God, thank you. All right, Songs of Solomon chapter three, verse four. Look at what the word of God says here. Scarcely had I passed by them, or scarcely, as some would say, had I passed by them before I found the one I love. I held him and would not let him go until I had brought him to the house of my mother and into the chamber of her who conceived me. You see, the Shulamite woman here was saying that I had barely passed by them. I was still just in the vicinity, barely, when I found the one I love. And I held him and would not let him go until I had brought him to the house of my mother and into the chamber of her who conceived me. 
Now let's look at Micah chapter 1 verse 7. In fact, let me explain this just for a moment. You know, there are some of us, we have not embraced what God is saying to us because we don't believe it is clear enough. Many of us are so obsessed with obtaining clarity before releasing faith in our hearts to believe the word of the Lord. The Shulamite woman says, I had barely passed by when I found the one that I love and I held on to him. But many of us will say, well, I mean, what I'm seeing from here, I need to know, I want to know what kind of cologne he uses. I need to move closer. I want to see the texture of his handshake. I, I, want, to be in, in, I want to be investigating when the word of the Lord says to believe. She said, I found the one that I love. Let me tell you something. The key here is not her sensitivity. The key is not her discernment, but the key is her love. When you love somebody or you know who you love, even from a mile away, you can sense them. You can discern what is going on because love awakens the heart. And many of us, the reason why we're not able to juice the revelation from what God is saying is because we still love our own ways above the ways of God. But when your love is for the way God operates and the wisdom of God and the mercy of God and the nature of God, when he speaks that one word, even though it, hadn't, it hasn't been broken down just yet, your love, the love in your heart would allow for you to connect with that word and you would say, that is all I need and I believe because that is the word of my heavenly father. You heard the people who testified here today? The examples that were given, man, the leader was like, I had barely spoken, but she already knew what I was talking about. And immediately her heart received the word of God and now she's being established in the business just as the Lord said. But some people would come and say, uh, I'm not sure that I understood what you were saying there. Can you re-prophesy to me again? And then you try to re-prophesy and you try to explain and they're still like, yeah, that's that. Yeah, I don't think things happen that way, but thanks for the effort anyway. I've had people tap me on the back and thanking me for the effort. <laughs> like I am making an effort to prophesy. You know, in their opinion, they're encouraging me, but the reality of it is it is their loss because the man of God says, once was it said, but twice did I hear it that the excellency of power belongs to God. When you love the word of God more than your ways, when you hear what looks like the word, you will know. The Shulamite was like, I had, I had barely seen the people. I was still on the outskirts of town, but the love in my heart was letting me know that the one the love is meant for is there somewhere. And I held on to him and I did not let him go. How many of us hold on to the word of God as though the word of God is the only man in town? Now, let me say that again. If there is only one bridegroom and there are so many spinsters, single women, and you happen to be the one that gets a hold of him, you're not about to let him go. You understand what I'm saying? Because to let him go is to stay single because that's the only one. If we would have that kind of attitude toward the word of God, and I believe the same is true if there was only one woman in town and there are so many single men, if you are the one that she gives attention to, you will not let go. You see, many of us do not Hold on to the word of God enough because we always believe we have options. The word of God is only going to become or you will only become consistent and effective at holding on to the word of God when you come to conclude within yourself that there is no help elsewhere. And so because I know that God has given his word and that word brings healing. It brings everything that I need. If truly I believe that in all, that, that everything that I need is in that word, 
then I will hold on to that word. Because to let go of that word is to completely give up on life because that word of God is life. To let go of the word of God is to miss your way because that word of God is the way. To let go of the word of God is to live a lie because that word of God is the truth. Hold on to the word of God that he has given to you as the Shulamite held on to her beloved. Praise the Lord. And let me talk a little bit about the significance of what she did with the word of God. The Bible says that the Shulamite woman says, I brought that word of God into the chambers of the one who conceived me. And you may be wondering, what is even the significance of that? Let me tell you something. The word of God that is hid in your heart, that is held on to, is what brings fruitfulness into your life. You see, she said, I brought that word of God. I brought my beloved into the chambers of her who produced me. So everything that is called the creative ability of heaven that resulted in you and other creation elements is able to produce for you everything you need if you would bring it into the chambers of your heart. It is very simple, but quite often we always make up all the ways by which we think we will receive fruitfulness. Now let us go to Micah chapter 1 verse 7 and I believe that by now it will come at us with great illumination. The book of Micah is before the book of Nahum or Nahum. Micah chapter 1 verse 7. The Bible says all her carved images. Well, you know what? Let me show you something else very quickly and then we'll come back to this one. Micah chapter 4 also verse 7. He says, I will make the lame a remnant and the outcast a strong nation. So the Lord will reign over them in Mount Zion from now on, even forever. Now look at what it says here in, in chapter 1 verse 7. All her carved images shall be beaten into pieces. All her pay as a harlot shall be burned with the fire. All her idols will I lay desolate, for she gathered it from the pay of her harlot, and they shall return to the pay of a harlot. Let me tell you something. When the Lord is taking from us the things that we have idolized, if he is removing from us, many of us, we immediately think of ourselves as being disabled because the Lord is removing idols from our lives. But the Lord has a plan for the lame. The Bible says that the ones that are lame will be the only ones to survive the judgment. The ones who feel like they have nothing will inherit everything. But before you qualify to be one of those people, you must be willing to give up the things that you have desperately held on to that are not of God. <laughs> you see, when I was going there initially, the Holy Spirit said to me, let them see the value of holding on to the right one. You see, many of us, the reason why we can't hold on to the word of God is because we love the ways of the world more than we love the word of God. And that is the reason why our hearts are still desperately holding on to the things of the world, even the things that are in the world that we don't understand. We don't know the secrets behind those things, but because that is what we know, that is what everybody holds on to, we're just going to desperately hold on to it. And that is the reason why there's no capacity for you to hold on to the word of God. And God says the way we are going to do this is first of all, we will seek out those who are willing to identify the idol and to give up the idol without the fear of feeling incapacitated. You know, I'm going to explain that using money because a lot of us, we speak money, right? You see, there are instances wherein many of us are more dependent on money than we know. We think we have faith. We think we are confident in God. But the real truth is that confidence is just because you have some money or you have a way of getting the money that you think you need. You've always had the same job for years. And you're like, man, whatever happens, I have this budget, I have this and I have that. And the Lord is like, okay, that is what you're holding on to. But I am bringing 
the most blessing anyone's ever experienced on earth to the remnants of the people. And the remnants of the people will not be the strongest of the people. They will not be the richest of the people. In fact, the Bible says that they will be the lame of the land. Jesus says, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. You see, and so at the end of the day, what happens to most of us is a lot of what God has revealed to you that he wants to do for you and through you, you keep thinking will happen only if you can have X amount of money or be in X or be in a particular place or hold a particular position. Unbeknownst to you, you are not thinking kingdom, you are thinking world. You understand what I mean? Some of us, there are people that have come to you to ask for money, whereas you were not supposed to give them money because money is not what they need. Remember the man by the gate called beautiful. What was he? He was lame. The lame was still trying to hold on desperately to money. But the Bible says the lame needs to hold on to the one who is committed to giving them an inheritance. This prophecy of Micah was written before that man was born. And he was sitting at the gate to the temple where scriptures are read every day the synagogue is open. And yet he did not know the ways of God. He was still stuck in the mindset of mammon and he was begging, how much money can you give to a man to bring them new legs? A lot of what we're chasing out there in the world will not change our situation. It's only going to continue to pollute our illusion. Let me say that again. This man was living in that illu with that illusion. He was living in the disillusionment that money was what he needed. But he's been there collecting change without experiencing change. Money does one thing to you. Keeps you as you are. If you are mean and you have money, you just become more mean. If you are promiscuous and you have more money, you just become more promiscuous. Money does not change anybody. It only encourages you to do more of whatever you know how to do. If it is evil, then you do more of it. But that is what we're desperately holding on to and we're not letting it go and we're bringing it into the bosom of the one of the one who conceived us. We're bringing it into our hearts and that is the reason why we cannot feel and experience the presence of God nor hear what he is saying because the idol that is sitting on the throne of our hearts was the one that we found and we've been holding on to. The man was at the gate called beautiful and he was like, oh, have you guys got any change? Have you guys got any change? Do you know that Peter, James and John would have given him money and walked into the temple as they had money? But it just so happened that they themselves were financially challenged at the time. And it is very important for us to recognize that if we have not returned the pay of the harlot and what it means, and I've taught on the subject of the pay of the harlot, the pay of the harlot is exactly whatever it is that the world gave to us while we were trusting in the system more than we were trusting in God. While we were prostituting our confidence, while we were prostituting our trust, rather than trusting God, rather than letting him have all of our worship, we trust more in the system, we trust more in the promises of politicians and rogues and whoever comes along. Instead of putting our trust in God, God says, I want you to return every money. You need to give it back. Give it back because I want you for myself alone. And Peter, James and John, in fact, in the particular place, I think it was Peter and John, they had no choice at that particular point in time than to give up the pay of the harlot simply because there was no way they could blend in with the system after the Holy Spirit had come upon them. The power of heaven singled them out, made them so distinctly kingdom property that the world could no longer accept them. They were, excommuni they were, they were excommunicated from the world. Now, let me tell you something. 
when it was happening, it was painful. But the reality of it is, it is the key to pressing into the kingdom. The prophecy of Isaiah in Isaiah 44, which was the prophecy of Isaiah to Cyrus. Cyrus meaning the church. That prophecy says that the Lord will build with the stones that have been cast out of the city. Not with the ones who are still bowing down to the wooden images of their Lord, which I have taught you several times represents money. And so when the world does whatever it does to exclude us, many of us feel like if we do not play along with what the world is dictating, we, we will have our legs cut off. We will not be able to go to places. We will not be able to do business. But the Lord is saying, even if you feel like that, you are still in a better place because I am coming for the lame. The lame will be the remnants of the people. So many people are panicking already in the body of Christ because of what the world is getting ready to do. The world is getting ready to make it even clearer that if you do not bow to the beast, you will not be able to buy nor sell. If you do not bow to the beast and the agenda of immorality, you will be called all kinds of phobia. You are called homophobia, dysphobia, that phobia. And that is because it is part of the plan of God for us to be rejected by the world. Some of us may have our businesses closed simply because we're not dancing to the tune of the beast. But let me tell you something. God is coming for a remnant who have been crippled by the system. And he wants to give everything to them. Not my words, but his word. We have to choose this day whom we shall serve. Is it God or is it mammon? Are we going to bow to come? Are we going to continue to bow to Baal? God forbid. The Lord says, I am coming for the remnants of my people. I will make them the remnant. You know what it means to be the remnant? To mean it means you will be the ones that will remain after the chaos. He will hide you under his wings until it comes down. And then when you come out, everything that is in front of you is yours. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you because so mightily grew your word and it prevailed. Let this word and the understanding of it grow in our hearts. And let it prevail over every stronghold of the world's mentality that we may have borrowed. Let it prevail over every mindset that depends on everything else but you. Let it prevail. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus and the chambers of our hearts that we may hold on to it as the Shulamite held on to her beloved. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I tell you what, folks. We need to begin to undo in partnership with the Holy Spirit the unfruitful works of unrighteousness. I'm going to complete that money example. John and Peter. Antoine, if they had money, they may not have thought about what else they have. There was a time somebody reached out to me and he was asking for a pretty large sum of money as a loan. And I thought to myself, uh, maybe if he had asked me two months ago, or if he can wait another two months, I don't know, maybe. But right now, I don't think that makes sense. So I, I held my peace. I kept back myself. And you know what, what happened was, I also felt bad telling him that I couldn't give him that money. And one day the Holy Spirit woke me up and he said to me, he says, I want you to look at what I'm showing you. And he showed me what the guy needed. It wasn't even money. He wanted to use money to purchase progress in life. Whereas what he needed was to wait for the hand of God to lift him up. And that was when it hit me that if I had had the money, if it was a different time wherein I had money to spare, I would have just given him the money without even listening to what the Lord is saying. Peter, James, Peter and John, I keep saying James, Peter and John, they said to the man, well, unfortunately for you, we don't have money. They sell silver and gold we do not have. And that was when it hit Peter. But wait a minute, but we do have something. 
and they said in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus rise up and walk many people come to us thinking they know what they need but the reality of it is you know what they need let me say that again many people many of us in fact not even many people come to us sometimes we think we know what we need because we think about the situation and the circumstance more than we think about this investment that God has made because hallelujah if it hadn't been for the disadvantaged situation quote unquote that John and Peter were in they would have missed an opportunity to see someone come into the fulfillment of their destiny so I want to encourage you brothers and sisters do not sorrow over whatever it is that has been taken from you that exists in the world only be fearful when Jesus is taken from you let us hold on to nothing else but the name of Jesus because that name of Jesus is going to set everything right. You know, one of the things that hit me this week, and I think I shared a little bit of it with Alan already, is this. When Adam was made, you know that quite often we think about Adam as a not too useful person. Well, I mean, I could have done better. I mean, for crying out loud, you were made in the image and in the likeness of God. And Satan came to you and said, oh, if you ate of this fruit, you will be like God. We're like, oh, how dumb. You're already like God. The reason why we say that is because we read it after the fact. But what tells you that Adam himself knew that he was a man in the image and in the likeness of God? You see, when Adam's destiny was being described, he was not there. The Bible says, and God said, let us make man in his image and in his likeness. Let us make man in our image and in our likeness and let him have dominion. When man was made, what if that man did not receive a briefing by God saying, oh, by the way, uh, we made you uh, in our image and likeness in case you didn't notice. There's no record of that. We do not have a record of him having such an exposition. What we do know was that God brought all the animals to him to see what he would call them. And the Bible says, whatsoever he called them was their name. Many of us, we walk through life so self-confident because we can name the animals, because we understand situations, because we understand other people. In fact, when Eve was brought to Adam, Adam was like, oh, I know this one. This is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. But with all of what he knew, he did not know himself. Because if he had known himself, when Satan came and said, oh, you will be like God, they'd be like, do you have something else? Because I am already like God. Do you know that a lot of what we struggle with in life and with other people is because of how much of other things and other people we think we know? Husbands will complain about their wives all day because they think they know she's this and that and this and that. But what about you? Oh, mister, you see everything that is wrong in everybody and in everything. What about the log in your own eyes? And that was why Jesus looked at the people and he says, I see y'all are busy pointing at the flint in someone else's eyes. Something this minute, you can see it. But in your own eyes, there's a log, but you do not see it. Many of us are like that and we need to stop being like that we need to recognize that no matter how much we think we understand how things work we first of all need to know exactly who we are and what God wants to do with us what if God does not want you to be a billionaire in dollars what if he doesn't want you to have at any point in time more than twenty dollars and still use you and do great things through you but the reason why we're killing ourselves over certain goals is because we see somebody else winning because they had money. We see somebody else winning, winning rather because of who they married. We look at all of the other people and we just automatically assume that we have to win the same way. 
But what if what you need is not silver and gold? What if God just wants to give you a new kind of stamina? What if God just wants you to be able to believe for longer? To be able to believe more strongly? To be able to think more deeply? But because we're not looking at us, we're looking at all the other requirements that people have laid out. The man by the gate called beautiful had come to the conclusion that all crippled people need money from other people to survive. He didn't think about the fact that maybe some crippled people are destined to stop being crippled in the name of Jesus. I'm going to read to us one more verse of scripture and we're going to break bread. Come with me to Romans chapter 1. We're going to read four verses very quickly back to back. We're going to read Romans chapter 1 verse 9. We're going to read Romans chapter 2 verse 9. And we're going to read Romans chapter 3 verse 3. And then finish off with Romans chapter 5 verse 3. So we'll start with Romans chapter 1 verse 9. Very quickly. Romans chapter 1 verse 9. It says, For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without season I make mention of you always in my prayers. Romans chapter 2 verse 9. Actually, very quickly, let me tell you the reason why we're reading Romans chapter 1 verse 9. When my wife was speaking earlier and we were praying, the Holy Spirit said to me, it says, there are some of your brothers and sisters who have not yet prayed enough. Let me say that again. The kind of prayer that is missing from some of our lives, thank you, Kenyatta, is a prayer that you say with clarity and with boldness. Many of us are still whispering under our breaths what we think God should do for us. Many of us have not even prayed clearly enough concerning what you want, concerning what you believe is an equipping that must be released unto you for you to fulfill destiny. When you're praying, you still wrap up your prayers with, God, you know what I mean. We still say things like, God, however you do it, I just, I just want to end up on top. Many of us still say prayers like, this child, I don't know what to do, but God just straighten them up. And God is like, if I straighten them up without you knowing what to do, what will be your contribution in this partnership? How would you as a person, a child of God, have grown from the experience of having a difficult child? You just want me to fix everything without you growing through the process. You were sent here by God, as Solomon said in Ecclesiastes, we are placed under the sun that we may be exercised and that we may understand the reason of things and how they add up. But many of us, we just want to have a blissful time with them and go into the next world empty. Whereas we came here to learn. But we don't want to do anything. We just, and so that is how some of us pray. We pray without clarity. We need to get to the point where you pray and you know that, yes, I have prayed and now I'm just going to go sit on the porch and wait. Or I have prayed and now I am clear that what I was praying about is actually not required because when I was praying and as I was praying and conversing with God, it became apparent that I was just praying because I saw somebody else. And now I don't even need to pray for that thing again because who needs that, by the way, when you already have this and then you move on to other things. But many of us haven't gotten there just yet. And you're saying, but brother Moses, the other day I prayed for two hours. Isn't, is, is, that should be enough. No, 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 no. Paul said every day. You need to keep on praying every day. Making mention, when he said I make mention of you in my prayers, he's talking about praying with a prayer of understanding. Not just describing scenarios and situations, but pressing into the heart of God for understanding concerning certain people. Last Yesterday afternoon I was doing the same thing and Nicole came to my mind. She's not here today, but I know she's very good at watching the tape for the messages that she misses. And the Lord revealed to me that there were things that she is working on, tasks that she has assigned to herself because she believes they need to be taken care of and she has kept it to herself. 
And the Lord revealed to me that the reason why she kept it to herself was because she has come to conclude that the people around her and other people that may be aware are not able to help. And so she's decided to shoulder it all on her own. And the Lord said to me, tell her that I see her, but it is time for her to give others an opportunity to lay their hands on the plow as well. You see, because we carry burdens at times, thinking that, well, we're trying to help. It's like when parents are raising children and you do all the dishes for them. You do their laundry for them because you love them so much, you want to help them. But what you're doing in reality is not giving them an opportunity to try their hands on these things. It's not helping them. In fact, if anything at all, it is crippling them because we only have our senses sharpened by reason of use. Train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is grown, he will not depart from it. If you have trained up your child to always have their laundry done for them, when they grow up, they would always expect somebody to do their laundry for them because that is the way that they were trained. And they will not depart from it. If we don't rebuke our children and they become adults and they get married and their spouse makes a comment about an improvement area, then they get angry. And nobody tell me that. No, don't tell me that. Because nobody ever told them that. Before their parents, they were always perfect. Whatever they did was always like, oh, at least you tried. If we only hand out participation trophies to our children for trying, then as adults, they would have such a sense of entitlement because they have tried. I mean, I went to work. I've tried. Some other people haven't even left the house. No, it is not enough to just go to work and participate. It is only enough when you have added value that is measurable and that, it is, and that is obvious. You don't just do things for show. You do things to the point where even the blind will know that this person is needed for this place to function. You understand what I'm saying? And that is the way it is. When the Lord is saying, and I'm just going back to the, Nicole's word now. So Nicole, when you're listening, the Lord is saying those folks that you know or have thought within yourself may not be able to make much of a difference. The Lord is saying you give them an opportunity and that opportunity that you extend to them will reveal to you what treasures I have hidden in them. They can do more than they look. They can do more then you know, and it's time for you to see it. But how did I get to that place? I got to that place because I make mention in my heart daily to the Lord concerning you. And that is exactly how we need to be, folks. We need to be daily and steadfast in the things of prayer. Romans chapter 2 verse 9. 2 verse 9, the Bible says, Tribulation and anguish on every soul of man who does. Let's actually read from verse 7. Eternal life to those who by patient continuance in doing good seek for glory, honor, and immortality. Eternal life, the Lord will render eternal life to those who by patient, con patient continuance in doing good, seek for glory, honor, and immortality. But to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. Tribulation and anguish on every soul of man who does evil of the Jew first and also of the Greek. I want to point out a thing here very quickly. You see, the sentence that is being meted out here. What I didn't tell you, Alan, when you spoke to me earlier about a dream that you had, is that some other people have had the same dream almost exactly recently that I became aware of. And so now, I'm not going to tell you all of that dream, but I'm just going to tell you what it's about. Many people are beginning to dream of judgment coming upon the earth. Dreaming of destruction, singing it very vividly, but in the middle of all that war and destruction and chaos, they are also seeing the ministry of angels rescuing people from the chaos and taking them to a place. And when this judgment comes, we have just read about it again, that tribulation and anguish 
is coming upon the soul of every evil man. What did I tell you a couple of weeks ago? Maybe not even a couple of weeks ago, it was Father's Day. On Father's Day, one of the things that I spoke about is that the darkness that has gone into the world is not for you. You are in the light. You will not stumble. The darkness is for the people who are not living in obedience to God. Okay? So, in the light of everything that I have shared so far, because it was a prophetic update that came to me and I knew that it needed to be carefully explained because the last time I mentioned it, I noticed that it wasn't as effective because what I said was this, Whatever is coming, is coming to them. It's not coming to you. The same waters that will flood them out is going to lift you up. I, I still think that there is an element of fear in some of us because we're like, oh my God, if all these things happen, oh man, how is it going to be? The inconvenience, the this and that. And so that is the reason why I needed to explain and lay the foundation that I have laid and I'm going to explain a little bit further by the time we get to Romans 3 and Romans 5. But at this point in time, I want to make a clear distinction that whether you go up or you go down, it depends on if you have a life jacket or not. Your life jacket is Christ because the Bible says put on Christ and he is life. Those who hold on to possession are going down. And I'm going to explain that to you using two names. The Bible says that Adam knew his wife and she conceived and bore him a son and they called the name of the son Cain, which we call Cain. And then again, she conceived and, and then again, she bore him another child and called him Havel, which is Abel. Cain means possession. Abel means breath, air. So let's apply those two things to what is going on in the world today. Possessions are off the ground and they belong on the ground. Anything that is of value materially sinks in water. If you take a bar of gold and you toss it in water, it is going to the bottom very speedily. Boat sinks faster than anything else because it's such a heavy metal. You understand what I mean? And so the things that are of possession and material and the things that are material, they will not go up when this judgment comes. But if you are filled with the Ruach, with the breath of God, you will go up. So the Lord is saying, I want you to hold on to the one that can save you. Like the Shulamite holds on to her beloved. What I have said in simple terms is if material possession and wealth is still your beloved, that is who your heart will hold on to. That is Cain and Cain never leaves the ground. But if you have the breath of God, if your focus is on the liberty of his presence, if your focus is on the inspiration that comes by having 104% confidence in God for daily living and sustenance, when judgment comes, you will rise. Show me a man whose life jacket is filled with treasures and I will show you a man who has drowned already. But you show me a man whose life jacket is filled with wind, filled with air, filled with breath and I will show you a man who has a chance to survive what is coming. It doesn't matter who you think you are. In fact, the Bible makes it clear that the first people to sink will be the Jews. The Jews here representing those who are full of themselves, who are very confident in the religious order that they belong to. 
who are confident in the fact that they have checked all the boxes and they are fine. They don't need any examination of the Lord. The Bible says they are the ones who will sing first. You just read it. But if you would humble yourself under the mighty end of God and constantly on a daily basis as a holy routine, say to the Lord, search me through and through and reveal who I am. I know a little bit about other people. I know a little bit about the economy, but who am I? Reveal to me. Such a person is one who is desperately saying, I need you to breathe on me. When you're close enough for him to breathe on you, then you become his Avel, you become his Abel, and you will not sink, you will rise. Let him search you. Let him read you of every unrighteous dependence on mammon. It's right here. The requirement is you do not depend and continue to practice unrighteousness. Now let us go to Romans chapter 3 verse 3. I'm going to read 3 verse 3 and read 5 verse 3 because of time very quickly so that we can then go and break bread with somewhere from the Old Testament which shall be revealed in a moment. Romans chapter 3 verse 3. Look at what it says. The Bible says, For what if some did not believe, will their unbelief make the faithfulness of God without effect? Verse Romans, let's just stop at that question and go to Romans chapter 3, I mean 5 verse 3. 5 verse 3 says, And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulations produces perseverance. Now I'm going to tell you why we're reading those two together. The Bible says that what if some do not believe? Will their unbelief have anything to get in the, will it get in the way of the faithfulness of God? What is this person saying? This person is saying, but God is faithful. The Bible says it is not the will of God that any should perish, but that all should come to the knowledge of the saving grace, right? That is the faithfulness of God. So the simple answer is, if you do not believe, even though the wind of God is all around you, if you do not breathe it in, you will still choke. So God is faithful. He makes his breath available. You need to take it in. And how do you take it in? God ensures that you go through tribulations and trials so that things will take the wind out of you that is not giving you life and make you pant for more of him. Hmm. We need to understand what is really going on in here. God is a mathematician. He's a, he's, he's a scientist. So he knows all of these things. And that is the reason why the Bible is saying that God has had mercy on the ones who did not easily believe because they didn't have a reason to believe. Everything was going well for them. They practiced all of what the world says that they should practice. They have a nice big house. They drive fancy cars. They love them at their job and they also love their job. And so they're fine. So they don't, they don't feel the need for the breath of God. Because the, the, the brooks of Egypt are satisfying to them. And now that is getting in the way of the faithfulness of God because God wants you to find the truth and the truth is that you need to depend on him. So what he does is he orchestrates tribulations and trials. Things chase you in life or you run after things to the point wherein you are out of breath and you start panting and that panting allows for you to need more air. To need more of him. Do not despise the chastening of the Lord. Now, let me put it all together for you. And I'm going to close my Bible here real quick so that we can finish in a timely fashion. I have essentially taken us down four paths today. First of all, told us how our hearts function. We hold on to that which we love. So make sure you love God. Otherwise, you will hold on to the world. Holding on to the world is holding on to possession, material things that belong on the ground. They will not go up when the time comes. You know, the Bible says that when he comes, we will be caught up to meet with him in the blue skies. If you have been weighed down by possession and by the ways of the world, you will be too heavy 
for the transport system. One of the things, Alan, it's okay if I share some of your dream. Oh, even if you had said no, I'm so eager. <laughs> he saw lights falling from the sky, and immediately in the dream, in the dream, he knew that some of those lights were bringing judgment upon the earth, but some of them were angels. They represented angels that were on assignment to pick up the elect. And when he saw them, he also had an opportunity. The moment he received that understanding, he had an opportunity to see through the eyes of one of the angels who was coming to pick him up where he was at. And then his vision switched back to his own perspective wherein he saw as the angel came and the angel, the hand of the angel became a passage of light. As it reached out to him, it became a passage of light. He said it became like a rainbow. Right? And so what is rainbow? Rainbow is the breakdown of light itself. Light it looks invisible, but when you break it down, it's seven colors. Not six, young people. Not six is the emblem of rebellion called pride. But seven is the full spectrum of light, which represents the spirits of God. And so he saw that passage of light. Now, the interesting thing about light is that if you will travel with light, you have to be light. You have to be light in your weight. Those who travel far are the ones who travel light. If you are going far, you can't carry baggage with you. Jesus wanted the gospel to get to the ends of the earth. That was why he told his disciples, don't even take your money back with you. You don't need that money. Don't take anything with you. All you need, you already have. And the Bible says he breathed on them. He said all you need is this breath, this inspiration, this unction. And the Bible says the holy men of old spoke as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. So if you would travel far with God and make the transport system of heaven work for you on the day of the Lord. You need to have rid your heart of all materialism. You need to have rid your heart of all possession seeking. You need to have rid your heart of all of the cares of this world because if you are weighty, you're not getting on. The faithfulness of God will bring you heaven's transport system because Jesus already promised. He says, where I am, there you will be also. But when the angels come, will they be able to carry you or will you still be heavy with unforgiveness and pride? Or will you still be very heavy with your own ambition of who you want to become or who you think you need to become? I am not telling us to become people without ambition, but what I am saying is, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, wherein nothing matters but the will of the I am. And the Bible says, Paul speaking, as we just read, he says, every day I make mention of you in my heart. Why did he say that? I skipped over those two things because the Lord would have me break them down to you very carefully. You know, we read two scriptures back to back, Romans chapter one, verse nine, and Romans chapter two, verse nine. And Paul was saying in Romans chapter one, verse nine, that I do not think about myself only, but I keep making mention of others. What did I teach you on Tuesday? On Tuesday, I told you that the priests have one assignment in these last days, and that is for them to become intercessors. And Paul was like, daily I intercede for the brethren. He says, because the ones who are self-seeking will face the judgment of tribulation and anguish. If you're wondering the best use of your time right now is not chasing any ambition that the world spells out or calls success. The best use of your time right now is to make mention daily of other people. Now, let me tell you, because I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, tell me, please, how does this work? Because I'm hearing what you're saying, but I need to know what it means. I said, because you told me that it is not enough for me to just know the animals. It's not enough for me to just know the people that I am seeing and the things that I am seeing like Adam did, but I also need to know myself so that I do not fall for the tricks of Satan. I know you're saying that, and you're also telling me not to be self-seeking, but to also pray for other people. I know there is a connection and the Lord said to me, yes, there is indeed a connection. He said, because the people who are self-seeking are always looking at everything from the perspective of how it will work for them. And that blinds them 
to who they really are. You know why? Because who you really are is not the receiver. Who you are is the giver. The person that receives from other people is not who you are. You are other people's opportunity. But who you really are is the one that is made by God to enrich humanity. And so you will never know yourself until you begin to think of how can I be of help. And so when you make mention in prayers of other people, God will begin to reveal to you how you can be of help. That helper is who you are. You are not the one who becomes rich. You are not the one who drives fancy vehicles. You are not the one who lives in beautiful mansions. Praise God for those things. But the one that you truly are before God, that part of you or that true nature of you that is made in the image and in the likeness of God is the you that is equipped to serve humanity. So by interceding for others and making mention of them, you begin to see their need and their need begins to paint a picture of who you are. Because the Bible says the one that does not know himself will never stand before kings. Have you not seen a man who is diligent in his work? He will stand before kings and not ordinary men or unknown men. So basically, if you will stand before the king of kings, you must know yourself. I tell you what, folks, the Lord is changing our perspective because the world's blinded us. The Bible says the prince of this world has blinded their eyes. How did Satan blind their eyes? by giving them a mirror instead of a window. The people in the entertainment industry are so willing to continue to promote deception. They continue to promote obsessiveness or obsession with material wealth. They continue to lie to us. Some of them, many of them actually know the truth. They know what they're doing is evil. They know, I recently saw a celebrity who is modeling an outfit that reveals the nakedness of her behind. And immediately I knew that she knew when she put that on that it is wrong. But because they lined her pocket with money, she was like, forget it. I'm wearing it. How do people get to that place in life? They get to that place because Satan gives them a mirror that only shows them themselves putting on the glamour of iniquity rather than them looking through a window and seeing what their participation is doing to the world. If you would open your eyes and see what your lack of involvement or what your negative involvement is doing to others, you will shake yourself from the dust very quickly. If you know that the songs you're singing is putting people in prison, if you know that the songs or the movies you're making is causing homes to be divided and children to become reckless, you will shake off yourself from such entanglements and immediately begin to seek ways to remain in the light. But guess what? when you only see how much money how much more money you need you want to be one of the people that is able to buy that next car mercedes is making i heard about a celebrity lately who's been parading a new mercedes that he got because they made only 150 of those and let me tell you something if you keep looking at self you will never feel like you have had enough but when you look outside also you will never feel like you have given enough and those two things, the devil is taking advantage of one and God wants you to take advantage of the other. We will continue to grow and seek the Lord because we know that there is a need out there to be filled. So thing number four, I know that I said two and three together very quickly. Thing number four is that the judgment that is coming is inevitable the change that is coming to the world is inevitable because you know if we just call it judgment people are always thinking oh why is everything what does everything have to do with god's judgment and god's punishment no 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 let's call it what it is it is a change that is coming into the world wherein the lord is removing the wicked ones and giving you an opportunity to inherit the earth such that all of the goodness that god has put in you can finally find its way into other people's lives without the wicked ones getting in the way with fake policies and the restraints that they bring with mammon. But in any case, I say all of that to say that it is inevitable what is coming. You need to now choose when that prophecy is fulfilled, 
How does it get fulfilled in your life? Will you be one of his who becomes glorified or will you become one of those who are kicked down? I'm begging you folks, we are closer than the many of us would like to think. I was almost going to say we're closer than, it, than they say in the news, but in reality, the news actually tells us a lot about how close we are. It's just the way we're interpreting it is we're not seeing it that way. And lastly, before we break bread, I know that I've closed my Bible. I'm really tempted to open it again, but I'm going to just say this to you very quickly, as quickly as I can. The word of the Lord says, arise, shine. Do what? Arise, shine. Whenever God tells you to do a thing, he enables you to do it. If you feel like you have been crippled in this last season, if you feel like a lot of what you wanted to do, you've been unable to do because of what was taken from you. I want to encourage you, the same one who says, I will allow the lame to be the remnants, did not say that I'm going to leave them lame. It would allow for you to be able to rise so that you can shine. I want you to hear what I am saying. The Lord says, arise. Everybody Jesus told to rise, even the one that had no leg, the legs grew because Jesus said, arise. When Peter and John said to the man, arise, take up your bed and walk. What happened? He rose. The Lord says in the last days, darkness will cover the earth, gross darkness to people, but you will rise, you will shine. What does that mean? And to one, what it means is that for every weakness and every lameness that we have experienced as individuals and as the body of Christ is about to be cured because God needs us to stand. So I want to encourage you, have a righteous expectation. One of the things my wife told me today before we left the house, she said, if the Lord is saying only believe, then shouldn't I be doing things as though I believe? If God is saying, I am taking you from here to there, should I not begin to pack my bags? Because he didn't say go there. He says, I am taking you. So the fact that I haven't heard his unk at the door saying, I'm here to pick you up. Is it when God comes to pick you up that you will start preparing? No, you prepare and then you wait for him because he likes to be waited for. The bridegroom waited until the virgins waited so that that way the people who were not meant for him would have by natural selection gone away because of impatience. The Bible says you read it just now. Through what? Patience. We just read it. Now I'm going to read to you Matthew, I mean Romans 5, 3 again because there was something that was skipped. So the Bible is open again. Praise the Lord. Now we're just going to read that and we're going to break bread. In fact, let's do this. I was going to take us to the Old Testament. I will still take us. So let's just read this. Um, Romans chapter 5 verse 3. The Bible says, and not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. There's a little while longer that we must wait. Some are getting ready to give up. You will not be one of them you will persevere until you have inherited the promise. Until you have received that fulfillment. I say this to you today because of the fact that the Lord has given me the unction with which to declare the equipping of the body. The Bible says he has given these gifts to men, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers for the edifying of the body and the perfecting of the saints. So when I stand in here, I stand not just as a man, but I stand as the gift of God because it is my privilege and yours. And so I declare over you today that your equipping will include perseverance, that you will be able to patiently wait even if it looks like they're about to come and take your children, you will wait. And what I mean by that is some of us have debts and remember the widow 
the what's that, what was that widow called? The widow of Zarephath. The Bible says that she was waiting because her children were about to be taken from her because of how much debt she had. But guess what? The Lord came through. So under such pressure, the same pressure that six years ago pushed you into sin and compromise, that same pressure will come now and you will not even move because the Lord brings you perseverance. Let me tell you something. I see that there are certain things that have become seasonal in our lives. They keep coming, you know, like a bad wind and they come again. And you're like, oh my God, here it comes again. Yes, it may come again, but it will not do to you again what it does because you have been helped. You will not tell a lie in the face of challenge like you used to, but now you will boldly speak the truth and damn the consequences because the consequences can only be in your favor when you are in the light. So I encourage you in the mighty name of Jesus, receive perseverance, receive hope, and be confident, genuinely confident that God is for you and not against you. So as we break bread today, we're going to the book of Zechariah chapter 14, verse 3. The book of Zechariah chapter 14, verse 3. It's going to be a breaking bread scripture and it's going to be the first time, this is what I have received of the Lord, that some of us will have clear visions. This is going to be the first time that some of us will have very, very clear visions. Once this word goes forth, receive it in your heart, embrace it like the Shulamite embraced her loved one because this will open the eyes of the blind in the mighty name of Jesus. So, where are we? Zechariah chapter what? 14, verse 3. The Bible says, Then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations as he fights in the day of battle. The Lord said to me, Let them know that I will go forth and they will see me. Many of us, the reason why we do not follow where the Lord leads is because we don't see him. And the Lord is saying, I am going and you are coming behind me. And your enthusiasm and your confidence will be because you will actually see me. It is very important because the Lord is about to do battle. You know, I broke this scripture down to you like what, two weeks ago? I broke down to you this Zechariah chapter 14 verse 3 that the Lord is about to do battle the way he does battle. And how does he do battle? He does battle by bringing plagues upon the land like he did in the land of Egypt. He brings battle by hardening the heart of Pharaoh so that the, the system even becomes more an enemy of his people. That the system would antagonize his people more. The way the Lord does battle is such that the system will do things that are completely unreasonable. They will continue to raise interest rates and devalue the money and do all of those things just to make life difficult. They would still expect you to make brick even though they're not providing straw. The Lord is saying that is the way that I do battle. I will harden their hearts. I will bring plagues upon the earth. But in all of those things, how do I do battle? I do battle by letting you know that I am for you. That you are covered under the blood. That the, that the disease that is coming upon the world will not come upon you. That only with your eyes will you behold the reward of the wicked. The Lord is saying, I need you to be confident in me. But some of y'all, your confidence level is so depleted that for it to come up, you have to see me. Oh, I've explained this before, but let me mention it again for the sake of Omega, who's just coming here for the first time. You see, sometimes some of us need to see things. Jesus says, blessed are you who believe without having seen. But Thomas was like, there's no way I'm going to believe he's raised from the dead. Why did he say that? Because his own confidence level has been so far depleted. And he was not ashamed to admit it, that I'm trying it, but I can't just believe it until I see it. Jesus did not say, shame on you. Why can't you just have faith like Peter? No, Jesus was like, that's fine. If you need to see me, I'll show up. And Jesus showed up to Thomas and he says, I'll do you one even better. Stick your hand in the palm of my hand. Are you seeing? Are you feeling it? And Thomas was so activated in the Holy Ghost. He ran until he got to India. It never stopped. There was no record of any one of those apostles that went as far as India. Thomas was the evangelist that took the gospel the furthest. Even though he started at level, it was at sub-zero level. Sub-zero. And Jesus was like, I got you. 
You need to see something. You will not just see something. You will see me. And the Lord is saying, tell my people I am going ahead of them. And they will see me from behind. Like Moses saw the Lord from behind. You will see him so that you will know that he has gone ahead of you. I pray for you today that in the mighty name of Jesus, that as you receive the Lord's body and drink of his blood, your eyes will be open to see your king's man redeemer. Your eyes will be open to see the Lord of hosts whose name is Jehovah Sabaoth. Your eyes will be open to know that the Lord is for you and not against you. You have been faint and the Lord knows it. You have been doubting and the Lord knows it. And the Lord is saying, I want you to see me. And you will go far. So I want you to confidently receive the Lord's body and drink of his blood in remembrance of him today. And the way the eyes of those disciples were open on the way to Emmaus. The Bible says the moment they came into the house and shut the door behind them, the Lord Jesus broke bread and gave to them and their eyes were open and they knew that it was the Lord. Your eyes will be open and you will see the Lord of hosts. You may eat and drink in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I saw the Lord concerning every one of us in here because I could, I, I sense the need for impartation, for the laying on of hands. And the Lord said to me, give them Psalms 71. I'm going to just give you Psalm 71. You know, typically once we break bread and read that scripture, we're out of here. But it's a special day today because um, as much as I would love to pray for individuals and lay hands, Necessity is placed upon me today to cut it short in righteousness and this is how we're still going to get the same benefit. Isn't that awesome? Yes, yes, if only you would believe, you will receive. So I want you to tap into this benefit from Psalm 71 verse 9. I want you to listen very carefully. The Lord is doing a thing amongst us. If you have listened, there is a consistent theme to tonight's message and that is the Lord is lifting up the arms that are weak is letting you know that there is strength available for you it's not just going to ask you to shine it's not going to ask you to rise it's also going to fix your lameness so look at what the Bible says here Psalm 71 verse 9 the Bible says do not cast me off in the time of old age do not forsake me when my strength fails I pray for you today that in the mighty name of Jesus that in areas wherein you feel tired are you tired of praying for that child are you tired of being an example to others and not seeing them bear fruits in those areas wherein you have labored over them are you tired the Lord is saying I have strength for you you might feel like it's been a long time since you have been believing God for this thing. You know, that's old age represents longevity. It represents, oh, I've been believing God all this time. I feel old at believing God for a miracle. I feel old at believing God for a breakthrough because I've been believing for years. And the Lord says, it doesn't matter if you feel old. I am coming through for you. The Lord is bringing you strength, is bringing you elevation. Not just so that you can oppress somebody else. Not so that you can feel like you have earned something. No, because it's not about self-seeking. This blessing is not for self-seekers. This blessing is for people who genuinely know that the Lord is their help. And as the Lord helps them, they will help others. And so I want us to tap into this strength together. Father, thank you for the ministry of your angels that are robing us in this place right now. Just robing us in your love and in your strength. Robing us in your divine abilities for what is ahead of us. Father, thank you for the gift of perseverance, for the impartation, for that equipping. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for you today. And if you're standing, if you're here today and you're saying, Brother Moses, these words that the Lord has spoken through you today, have given me a reflection, an introspection. These words have caused for me 
to see how much that I actually need the Lord. If you're saying that specifically because you know as you were sitting there that the Lord has caused for this particular occasion and this moment in time to be the beginning of the rest of your life, to be the beginning of a renewed relationship with the Lord, with your Lord and Savior. If that is you, I will pray for you if you would come up here. As the word was coming forth, you already knew that, oh, this is it. I'm having a new beginning with the Lord. I want to pray for you. I want you to come forth. I want to hold your hand and receive you into this new season of your life. You're saying, oh, this is it. I am, I am definitely turning a new leaf with the Lord. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for these ones that are standing here today and the dedication in their hearts to hold on to you and to bring you into the secret place. Thank you for the renewed dedication and commitment to say from now on, it is the Lord Jesus and me like never before. I'm going to keep the altar open for one more minute, but I'll start praying for the ones who are here. Please approach. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you. Because the light is being separated from the darkness. It is a new day. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will run and not be weary. You will run and not be weary. The Lord is drawing you after himself. You will run and not be weary. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. And as you go back to your seat, I want you to say, I receive the new beginning. I receive this new day. I receive this new dawn. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you. Because this is one of the ones who will see very clearly. Oh yes, it is, it is your portion. It is your lot. You are a partaker already of the grace that just got given out for those that will see very, very clearly. And once you see, you will hit the ground running after the Lord into victory in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. You know what I see for you is you are going through a new season in a new season. There is a new season that is unfolding and revealing a new you. And outside of that, another bud is, is unfolding and receiving a new, re revealing a new life that God has for you. So you become a new person in a new life. It is a double blessing for you. Praise the Lord. Because we can become new and still be where we've always been. And what that means is we have become bigger, but we don't have room to turn. And the Lord is saying, you know, I have made room because you are in a new place. So Father, thank you, Lord, for the double in this season. I want you to go back to your seat and say, Father, I thank you for my new season. Thank you for, my, for the newness that you have brought into my life in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. A new commandment I give to you, the Lord Jesus says, love others as I have loved you. You are going to reap love in this new season. You have labored and you now will receive. In fact, I heard that you will be labored upon. Others will go the extra mile to fulfill their part in your life of blessedness in the mighty name of Jesus. Immediately, this woman's heart receives with joy that which the Lord has said. I want John to come inside. I want to pray for him. Tell him to find somebody to look after those children and then he can come. I want to pray for him. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for this man. Thank you for the new season that is upon him and others around him in Jesus' name. Amen. Every one of you, as I pray for you, I want you to go back and declare over yourself that I walk in my newness. Thank you, Lord, for my newness. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you. The Lord says it's time for you to have no routines. It's your season for new routines. You will have new routines that will stretch you. You will have new routines that will exercise you. You will have new routines that will cause for you to bring gifts. You see, what I see is I see you climbing up a shelf and you had jars that are covered with linen and wrapped around with threading and you were unwrapping the thread. The thread looks like it's a natural material, maybe leather or, 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 or burlap, but you're taking off the thread, removing the, the linen, perceiving the fragrance of what's in the jar. And the Lord says, yes, those are abilities and giftings that have been put away. And in this season, the Lord is causing for you to remember them and to bring them once again to oil the machine of your fruitfulness in the mighty name of Jesus. Those new abilities, 
Oh, Rabba Kandeli Yada Momondo Shantala Dari Geda Babarando School. You will find so much fulfillment in doing them, in using them, that you will never put them away ever again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You already know because as I was saying it, the Lord took my attention to your eyes in the vision and I saw that your eyes were on the content of the jar. So as I was speaking, I know you already know what they are. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let this woman go. Oh, that she may serve me, says the Lord. Let your father testifies of this closeness that you all are experiencing together. And as he said that, he said that on behalf of your heavenly father because he stands at the door and he is knocking. He wants to enjoy closeness with you. And so as you enjoy spending time with Kenyatta, your father, enjoy time spending with the Lord Jesus also, your father. You see, because he says, if you have sent me, you have sent the Father. And Jesus is standing at the door and he says, I just want us to hang out. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you would let me in, I, I, I tell you what, I'm coming in for fellowship. He said, if you would let me in, I will come in and sup with you. I'm not coming in to labor you because he said, my burden is light and my yoke is easy. I am coming to sup with you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray that your eyes will be open to see the sweetness of that fellowship that he offers. In the name of Jesus, praise the Lord. God is good. Bradley, the Lord has touched your emotions. As you were coming in here, the Lord has touched your emotions. You see, that emotional release is going to be a fragrance unto the Lord, a, a thing of worship. Oh, Santa, it doesn't matter where you're at. When you feel that emotion welling up within you, feel free to break down. Even when you're in the aisles at the grocery store and you feel the Lord moving within you, he wants to receive your sacrifice in that area of worship, in that area of surrender, of just being yourself before the Lord. So your emotions have been touched by the Lord and they will become a fragrance of praise unto him in the mighty name of Jesus. From your heart, you will burn fat of incense to the Lord. And the Lord receives you, he receives your sacrifice, he receives your expression of, the lo of love, and the Lord receives your surrender. In the mighty name of Jesus, God bless you in this season for you. Not only are you moving into a new house, you're really moving into a new season. In the mighty name of Jesus, praise the Lord, God is good. Hallelujah. And the same, let me just pray for your wife so that y'all can just have that double barrel together. Lord, in Jesus' name, so as a sign to you of this newness, I re re release over you healing now for your body. As a sign unto you, I release over you healing for your body in the mighty name of Jesus. Sorry if I pushed you. I got really excited concerning what I saw. But I released over you as a sign unto you restoration the lord is restoring relationships you have already given glory to god for that he's restoring your, your your ability to function as a family with the resources and he's restoring also your body in the mighty name of jesus and that will be a sign to you quickly even from now you will begin to feel a release and a relief in your body it doesn't matter the cause of the discomfort. You may have identified the cause, but the Lord is now saying, I am bringing you the solution so that you can receive that as a sign to, to stir up your confidence in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for the new season that has come upon this one. Pray often with all manners of prayers. Pray often with all manners of prayers. It doesn't have to be a special occasion. You see, because what I'm seeing is you like to kind of like make a special time. Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make time. The Lord is saying, no, 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 no. It doesn't have to be like Jesus told the woman by the well. She, he, Jesus said to the woman, and John, you can come up after this in case you need to go. Jesus said to the woman by the well, a time is coming wherein you wouldn't have to come to this well or go to the mountains because the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. So as much as it is expedient sometimes to make time and make special arrangements, the Lord is saying, I want to hear from you always. When you're in the car driving, when you're cooking, when you're shopping, when you're thinking, when you're researching, when you're browsing, I want to hear from you always. Let it be fluid. Oh, the Lord says it will be fluid in this season. In the mighty name of Jesus, praise the Lord. I sent for you simply because the Lord keeps giving you glimpses into spiritual warfare. And the Lord says, you are his battle axe. However, the battle belongs to the Lord. 
so your heart will not be fearful but you will be confident in the Lord of hosts who has gone ahead of you to do battle like he always does battle and so that way your heart will not push back on the dreams you see what I mean because there are certain times when we have some experiences and we want to shut down no, your heart will not push back because your confidence has been renewed in the God of your salvation who also is the Lord of hosts. So I release you unto more dreams in the mighty name of Jesus. Keep dreaming and keep singing victory in those dreams because the battle is the Lord's in the mighty name of Jesus. So the angel that you saw is the angel of the Lord and you knew it already when you saw that one that was completely made out of gold. That was the angel of the Lord and the Lord is saying the battle is mine. Fear not for I am with you. Fear not because I have gone ahead of you. So I release your heart to dream more and to see more without any fear, without any hesitation in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you. Josephine. Okay, so the time is now for there to be a distinction. So be ready to confront the darkness and to call forth the light. You see, because when my wife was praying earlier and she says, that many of us are dealing with situations wherein it appears as though there is darkness and there is light. You have to speak to the light. You have to see the light. You have to separate the light from the darkness like your heavenly father does. And the way you're going to do it is by speaking like he spoke. And so you will speak. You will commend the light. You will commend the goodness. But you will tell the darkness it's time for it to go. So Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for this time of distinction. And as the Lord begins to reveal to you, Clearly, the distinction in their lives. He will also give you the wisdom for the separation. So when you see the darkness and you see the light, don't just assume you know what to do. Say, Father, give me the wisdom to do it. To deal with it because the darkness has to be made separate from the light. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because this word is for you and your household. You will serve the Lord. Have I prayed with you? Hallelujah. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you because your dependence is on the Lord. The Lord is dependable. They may have failed. She may have failed. But the Bible says the Lord is dependable. Do not transfer the disappointment that you have experienced in the hand of another to the Lord. He is not like them. He is God. And so let your heart heal this very moment and be made whole again to trust completely in the God of your salvation. And you see the Lord is bringing you to a place where it's going to be easy to forgive. It's going to be easy to restore others as you have been restored. It's going to be easy to say, Father, forgive them for they did not know what they were doing. It's going to be easy for you to say that they meant, that they meant it for evil, but the Lord meant it for good. It will be easy because the Lord is bringing you to such a place wherein you will see His goodness and His mercy. And you will see His restoration in your life to the point wherein you would want to see nothing but the restoration of others. And you will say, Lord, I want to be a part of that restoration. I know they're not they don't expect that from me they already think that I'm too hurt to forgive but I want you to let them see that I am part of that restoration you see the Lord knows you see when he says to you that she may have failed but that he the Lord will not that is, that is exactly where you have been holding back from the Lord because of what they did and the Lord is saying I am God I do not fail and he would allow for you to hold on to him like the Shulamite holds on to her beloved. And you will hold on. You see, you have a great opportunity because some people had their restoration at a time that is still far from the elevation and they lost it. But your restoration in God at this time is coming at such a time that is close to the vessels of light coming to pick us up. You will not falter until the very end. Many may stumble around you, but this is it for you. You're finally restored. And when I say finally, you are restored unto the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is not for you to cast off restraint, but that is for you to be able to manifest the joy of knowing that you are secure in Christ every single day, even in the face of opposition. And when you feel like you may have failed, remember the Lord is saying, I am your strength. He will pick you up and he will get you going again in the mighty name of Jesus. So don't, let, don't, don't be hung up on the weakness. No, that for you now, you are immune simply because what you're operating with is the righteousness of God that you are in Christ Jesus. So nothing will draw you back because they will try. The voices will try to resurrect. But no, you will speak life and darkness will be kept in the night. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you and thanks for coming out. God bless you. And so as you go also, keep thanking God for the new day that has come upon you. Antoine. Breathe. Let your body be light before the Lord. Let the wind of His grace carry you. And then every other thing will fall in place. You already know that they're needed. Yes, the Lord knows that they are needed. Because as I was speaking, as the word of the Lord came, what I saw in you was that you have labeled certain things a necessity. And it was almost as if you were trying to explain to the Lord, but Lord, we need these things, don't we? We need to have this thing placed. The Lord says, yes, they will fall into place, but I need you, first of all, to take in my life as though it is all you need. And once that begins to happen, even more things will align to you in righteousness. The lines are falling onto you in pleasant places, man of God. You have a goodly heritage. God bless you. And concerning, oh, okay, already. Antoine, look at me. What I hear is that all you have to do is open the word. And light will abound. You see, as you were about to leave, the Lord said to me, there is one area of renewal. And that is in the word. Just all you have to do is just open it. And light will come. So it's not just in the place of meditation, but it is also in the place of just reading it. It will come in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you. Thank God for the newness of life. Hallelujah. So I know why you came. So why don't you come closer? Please come closer. In the mighty name of Jesus. You're tired of all the fakes. You're tired of all the empty promises. You're tired of the good feeling without good results. And as you were coming in here today, in your heart there was a desire to have an encounter for the Lord to reveal to you a thing that assures you of His presence. And so Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you because this woman, Lord, will see what you have put inside of her that you took from within you. That which is of the Lord that is on the inside of you that might still be hidden from you will be revealed to you that you may know that you have encountered the Lord at Bethel. That you have encountered the Lord at Bethel. And as a sign unto you, they will listen to you. When you ask for a meeting, they will come. They will listen to you. When you ask them to change, they will change. When you tell them to stop, they will stop. They will listen to you. You don't have to persuade them. You just have to speak. And that will be a sign to you that indeed the Lord is bringing out from within you that which he himself placed there for the healing of others. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we thank you because this is a new day in this woman's life. Bask in the glory of your Lord. The anointing of the Lord is upon you. This day, the grace and the enablement of God will lighten the load that has been on your shoulders. In the mighty name of Jesus, your joy has been renewed. You will sing again like you used to. In the mighty name of joy, Jesus, you will have hope again. I see you singing by the window. And what that means is that you're not waiting to hear by text message or by telephone a confirmation of the things that you, are, that you desire, but you will stand by hope, already believing that it is done. You will sing again, you will hear again. You see, there was a time in your life that you would just meet people and it would seem random. But then from the conversations, you would say, wow, this is, this, this is God. I wasn't even going to be here. I wasn't even going to go there. The Lord says that you're about to have such experiences again wherein you will have divine encounters. You will meet people and you will know that the Lord indeed orders your step. You see, because your spirit needs to feed on things like that for your joy, even the joy of your salvation, to be optimized again. When you're excited as it was in the beginning to be called his child, it is a new day in the mighty name of Jesus. You see, and your hands were right again. Revelation and insights. You will sit down and you'll pick up your pen and you will begin to write and say, this is the word of the Lord to me. And I know that I will receive that which I am writing because it is my father's promise to me. I see your hand writing and just writing it down in confidence and in joy, almost as if you are testifying, but you are writing it down. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for this newness. Thank you for this new season. You also, as you go to your seat, thank God for the new leaf that has been turned 
in your life today in Jesus' name. Michelle, did you come for me to pray with for you? You didn't come, but you should be here. Oh, you are waiting. Okay, and then you got tired of standing. Okay, alrighty. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, Ramu Munda, Les Mimende. You see, there's been something has been fixed. And what is been fixed is delayed confidence. Okay, because what I see is instances where people come and bring disappointing news, like they tell you they're no longer working for you, or they just say something annoying. You, you get jolted backwards. And then it takes a few, it takes some moment. In some cases, maybe a couple of days for you to build yourself back up together again. Sometimes it's on your way home and you're like, no, it doesn't matter what anybody does. The Lord is with me. People have done worse and I, and I, and I am still here. You see, that, but there is that instance of first of all taking the heat. What I am saying right now is the Lord is taking care of that. You will not even feel jolted. You are like Mount Zion. You cannot be moved. It doesn't matter what anybody says. It doesn't matter what anybody threatens. It doesn't matter what they say. You will not be moved. And that resilience and that stamina would allow for you to be able to receive the others who need to be in your life. You understand what I mean? The others who need to be in your life to serve you. To open doors for you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for this woman. And I thank you because as she comes forth today to say this marks a new beginning. It is a new beginning of confidence a new beginning of favor. And you know what is also interesting is, is like this is coming as a bonus and you're about to have a new beginning of clarity. You see, people will understand the first time you say it, you don't have to re-explain yourself. They won't misunderstand you when you're negotiating. The moment you say it, they'll be like, oh yeah, we get it, we get it, we get it, we get it. Because now your words are coming forth with light to illuminate the blind in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for this new season and this woman's life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's interesting that you're touching your eyes because what I heard is that you need to dry your tears. You understand what I mean? Wipe your tears away. You see, it is harvest season for communion house and for you. You understand what I mean? So just wipe your tears. It is a new beginning. It is a new day. You see that scripture that we read from Psalm 71 verse 9 is for you. You already know that it's for you. You see, it doesn't matter how long you have waited. The Lord is saying, I've got you covered. Okay, so let that be your confidence. Let me still shake your hands anyway. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for this man. Your joy has been renewed. Your confidence has been renewed. Your hope will not be dashed. Not anymore. Yes, the Lord is with you. And I want to encourage you, just wipe your tears and just say, you know what? I am more rejoice in the God of my salvation because he's got me covered in Jesus' name. Psalm 71 verse 9, everybody, let's not forget. Alrighty, well, it looks like people are coming in from God knows where because every time it's like the line is still the same line. Praise the Lord. All righty, so let's be snappy about it because we told Cedric he's going to be out of here by nine and he's still here. Oh yeah, praise God. All righty. Father, in Jesus' name, the Lord, I mean, I believe that you drew a lot from that message today. You know, because the Lord is letting you know that confidence is not in the system. Your confidence should be in the Lord. And that's what the Lord's been doing. You know, whatever it is that has been stripped from you, whatever it is that has been taken from you, is not to render you lame. It's just to re render you a remnant, which means you will be those who will remain to inherit in the mighty name of Jesus. So Father, I thank you. You already know what I have said. You understand what I mean? You see, because the ones who remain, who continue to follow the cheese, will not come back. But you're not going after the cheese. So you remain. You literally dodge the bullet by obeying the Lord. God bless you. Hallelujah. Give God thanks. Oh yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. One by one, you will hear of some of them and then your heart will give glory to God. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you. I pray for you today. I'm, I'm going to just say a prayer for you that I desire for you because of the potentials that I see in you of the Lord. As the deer pants for water, so shall your soul long for the Lord. I pray for you to receive a stirring up of a desire to know God, to know more about God. You see, not just so that you can teach others, but so that you can be fully formed in the Lord Jesus. I know on some days you're going to read that Bible as though you want to go preach a sermon, but it is primarily for you 
to be made whole. It is primarily, primarily for you to be thoroughly furnished. And what that means is for you to be rounded and grounded. And then being able to teach and share with others would only be an overflow of what God is doing in you. I commend you to the grace of God and I pray that you will hunger and thirst after righteousness every day and you will be filled in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank God for this newness of life and for this new season over your life in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to just quickly pray for Cody, your husband. I know that he's not here. He's probably looking after uh, Carter outside. I just want to pray for him that he will have a divine encounter, that he will see. You see, the ministry of angels have to be real to him in this season for him to be able to go where the Lord is leading. And I pray that he would actually see the ones that the Lord has sent to open the door so that he would have the confidence to walk in it. You see, you understand what I mean? Because let me tell you what I saw. And then you can share it with him just so that he can be fully expected. I see him standing with a stick. You know, almost like a blind person, you know, the way they want to feel their way through things to move. And he was standing there and he was stopping at the edge of the door, but he wouldn't move. And the Lord opened his eyes and he saw the angel of the Lord standing so that he may know that this is the Lord's doing. And that will kill any hesitation that may remain in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Father, we give you praise. Anita, God is good and he has done you well. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, yes, he has done you well. He has done you well. He has gone ahead of you. Give him thanks. So I just want to say this very quickly. Don't convince them that you know what you're doing. Okay? Don't sell yourself. Keep every conversation on what the Lord has given you an opportunity to present. You see, because someone, I see you telling somebody, oh, I know what I'm doing, and you were making it about yourself and they were put off. The Lord says, even if they seem to question your experience, your knowledge, or your ability, just ignore all of that. And just focus on what the opportunity is. And when you do that, you allow the Lord to let them see you. The Lord will reveal who you are to them. Okay? So don't fall for that trick. When they ask you questions that seem to be probing at your professionalism, at your experience, at your ability, what I'm seeing is a particular event that is about to happen. Not the ones that just happened, the one that is about to happen. And the Lord is saying you need to steer your heart away from wanting to defend yourself and sell yourself. Sell the goods. And let the Lord sell you. In the mighty name of Jesus. When you come out of it, you will heave a sigh of relief. I say, whew, whoa. And then you will get the phone call and it is done. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you because this is now, it is now, it is now in Jesus' name. God bless you. Give God thanks and just thank him, you know, for lightening your load and for making it easy. His burden is light, his yoke is easy. In Jesus' name, God is good. And could you do me a favor? Just go this way instead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is good. And for those people who may not have seen me minister before, this is not a ritual. It is pictures. As they show it to me, I want us to walk in it. It's just kind of like a simple start. If, you, if we can work with what the Lord is showing us, how are we going to then position our hearts to obey what He's telling us? Amen. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you because as the Lord touched your heart, you responded saying, you know what? Man, there is more. There is more for me. I need to press in even more. I need to be more intentional about giving my very best to God and giving my all to God. As you were saying that in your heart, the Lord has heard your pledge and He strengthens you today and you will have more ease than before by the anointing to ensure that you put Him first and trust Him as though He is the only one. Nothing else will get your attention away from what the Lord is calling you to behold in the mighty name of Jesus. It's a new day of focus, a new day of fresh dedication for you to the things of God. And for you, see, let me tell you something. When I say the things of God, I'm not just talking about service and the, uh, you know, in the house of God. I'm, I'm talking about the things that the Lord wants to converse with you on. And it will be the beginning of, of long, fulfilling conversations with the Lord. So clear as though he is sitting across the table from you. I see you smiling and rejoicing and saying, wow, this is awesome. Yes, it is awesome. This new relationship, this new page in Jesus' name. God bless you. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you because of this young man here. Lord, 
make his path straight in righteousness that he may walk in the light right from his thoughts to his words in the mighty name of Jesus your conversation will be that of a believer the Lord touches your tongue today and purifies your speech you will speak as a believer Hayden regardless of the language that your generation speaks you will speak the language of honor the language of faith the language of confidence in God you will speak the language of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego the ones who have chosen to not defile themselves in the name of Jesus welcome to your new season of chasing after God with all of your heart and you will find him in Jesus name amen praise the Lord God is good Ezra alrighty Father, in Jesus' name, thank you. Ala morodo shi ala breke di amromo moskentali ala brodo shi gide livra dos mandala dari ala manda has klu romandali ala broko dos ti adala dari gede broko dos sedala dari ba. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, let this heart encounter you. In the mighty name of Jesus, let this heart, Lord, encounter you. In the secret place, let this heart encounter you. Let this heart, and when that happens, surrender it to the Lord, Ezra. Surrender it to the Lord. Your heart will not resist in the day of your encounter with the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. Alrighty. And um, if you wait for two minutes, you would actually see the end of the service because I see you with your bag. And so God is good. Um, Alan is going to come up to say a blessing over the offering. So while he is coming up, please let's be ready to package our tithes and offerings. And um, he's just going to come because of time. He's just going to come and say a blessing over the offering. I tried my best possible to finish before nine o'clock today. That was even why I pressed in. I got Genesis, I mean, Psalm 71 verse nine. But I also know that certain commitments have to be renewed before the Lord today. And it will be very worth our while once the testimony starts coming in. Alan, the Lord bless you. God bless you, everybody. See you on Tuesday. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. If you need an envelope for offering, feel free to come forward and grab one. Uh, we're having a technical difficulty with the screen there, so I'll give us the given details to our family online at PayPal, dollar sign communion house, and... Our uh, cash out is the same. Father, we give you praise. Hallelujah. And with our offerings prepared, Father, we say unto you that there is none like you. We thank you, O God, again for meeting with us, dealing with us, O God, and granting unto us deliverance by your hand and by your hand alone. Father, as we give tonight in faith for what you have done, because you've instructed us to do so, O oh God, let these offerings be found pleasing in your sight, O oh God. Lord, we say unto you that we love you, that all of our thanksgiving, all of our adoration belongs to you. And we all said, amen, hallelujah. Let's celebrate the Lord tonight for all that he's done. I'm telling y'all, we started on the high note, high note and we just stayed there. We give God praise. And if you need to connect with us, Brother Omega, good to see you tonight. Uh, we have connect cards here. We'd just love to lock in with you. Brothers, don't forget, tomorrow we'll be meeting up in the morning for golf. If you need those details from me again, just come see me after service. Everyone have a blessed night.